So we started our trip in Poprad. Poprad was a kind of industrial city on the surface, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. And like, it looks like uh, I would compare it to some part in Polish cities where there's a lot of like still, um, I would say communist architecture. You're very lovely and diplomatic. I'll translate that to you. The city is imposing, a little bit scary looking even when you first drive up to it. But when you get out of the car, walk and explore, you'll see that there's a great aqua park there and an even greater old town. And that's what I'd like to focus on because I don't know about you, but for me, the old town, it like alleviated all this uh, Soviet-esque kind of feeling that I had from the hotel where we stayed and, and the breakfast. It was like being transported into a completely different time and place where the streets were dark, mysterious. Like it, it was basically a time machine. Yeah, and it was like cleaning the, how do you say in English, cleaning the, before the next course, cleaning the palette? Clearing the palette. Because the old town was completely medieval. So Poprad was most awesome because it was in close proximity to the reason we visited Slovakia on this trip, the Slovak paradise, which is a yep. mountain labyrinth of amazing trails that are challenging, invigorating, I would even go as far as to say a little bit dangerous because they put you into unity with nature by having you, for example, climb waterfalls, follow a river creek up a mountain. And what I enjoyed about that so much is I was so distracted by the obstacles we had to overcome that by the time we reached the top, it was like only then did I realize, huh, I'm sweaty and tired because we've been climbing like way up this whole time. So you have like a, a little bit of a distraction on the way up. Paradoxically, the way down is a little bit boring because you don't have any of those yeah. obstacles anymore. So I don't want to give you any spoilers, but it was different than this what I expected. I expected that it's going to be challenging, but there were a few points that you certainly shouldn't take kiss with you. And if you do, please remember about helmet, helmet and maybe actually some climbing equipment just to like secure but you certainly cannot have the fear of height and uh, you just need to keep good balance and take a really waterproof shoes. After Poprad and the Slovak paradise, we visited Nova... Nova Vyspiska. And that was also phenomenal because you were met with this beautiful old town, once again, familiar to the rest, but with one, well, two distinctions. The first is that there's the tallest church in all of Slovakia. Yeah, it looked epic, very gothic, like something that you would not expect in a city that was pretty much small. Many epic buildings, actually. Yeah. The second thing is that this was one of the first town centers to be electrified and illuminated in all of Europe at the end of the 19th century. Altogether, that was cool. After yeah. that, we went to Košice, which is one of the most picturesque towns yeah, in Slovakia. Many, many people, like at least I, the locals try to compare it to the Polish Krakow. I would say that um, they, there are some similar similarities. However, Kosice, which I found it to be uh, a benefit for us, was pretty much like um, there weren't many people. There weren't many, many people at all. It was spectacular though. It's like the type of place where everywhere you point the camera is beautiful, so you just take it in. My only complaint is that I found the center to be more focused around drinking establishments than eating establishments. So I was starving and looking for something to eat. And it, I generally have a hard time choosing a restaurant in that situation. And when there was nothing but bar after bar after bar, it became frustrating. But then we found uh, an incredible Asian fusion restaurant with like probably the best sushi that I had in Europe, period, hands down. So yeah. Koshitsa is awesome. But when we were at that restaurant, the waiter warned us not to go to Lud Ludnik, Ludnik 9. Ludnik, Ludnik 9, I, I think Ludnik, Ludnik 9. Yeah. And Ludnik 9. where we were planning to go, yes. honestly speaking, just for a ride. Europe's largest slum, that's uh, curious. We did drive past it, but I think it was smart not to venture in because apparently cars can even be stopped and messed with. It seems like how it is possible that a place like that exists in the middle of European Union, 
And like, I do understand that there are some reasons and it's not the um, topic that you can even discuss in few words, but it just makes me sad that no child should be raised. Really? Yeah, brought up. Brought up in conditions like that. And I feel like with all these great things that we saw on this trip, like that's a little bit of failure, not like I'm not talking about Slovakia, but about humanity that we allow that to happen. I would say that's a question for the Slovaks. Uh, no one else could probably answer that. Uh, what is the story behind it? Only they could really tell us, right? We're just happy little tourists with a camera passing through. But yeah, place was pretty disturbing, I think. Indeed. And then we went to Prashev. Prashev, I think. Prashev, yeah. yeah. It was really absolutely surprising because when I Google searched it, I found less flattering images than what the reality beheld. And the reality was what I think is actually like uh, one of Slovakia's largest gems because this was like as beautiful as Košice, in my opinion, but it was also lively. Like yeah. there were locals moving around, there was a lot of young people. And I noticed that you don't always necessarily have that in Slovakian towns. Then we went to Bardejev, which uh, that's like almost cheating in terms of visiting because the, the whole town is a UNESCO site. Yeah. So, you know, what else do we have to say? I mean, it was... it's like a time capsule in the best uh, meaning of this word. Definitely. And we are ending our visit in the Bardejev spa, which also does not disappoint. In a moment, we're going to have some of the esteemed waffles with chocolate. Which I'm very looking forward to. Definitely. And I'm looking forward to our next visit to Slovakia. Maybe we'll go and see the west part of the country, finally. Because, as I said before, I have a special sentiment about coming here. It was the place where we had our honeymoon Indeed. all those years back. And uh, it always remains to be elusive and distant. And I can't really capture it, which keeps me coming back for more. So. Thank you guys for watching the vlog about Slovakia. Made a bunch of other videos about Slovakia. Check out the playlist. Subscribe to Cult America. And enjoy see the next, next video. Week.